Anyone who has spent more than 10 seconds on this channel is probably aware of my deep love for Final Fantasy XI, a game that kept me invested and entertained for years with its vast world, unique jobs, and slow strategic gameplay. I'm constantly reminded of how much I missed the good old days of MMORPGs in that title, and others that I never got a chance to enjoy. But I also realize I'm probably remembering the period with a bit of rose-colored glasses. So hey guys, it's Hunt for Games, and try to shake those rose glasses off, let's get into my top 5 aspects from old MMOs that were truly special, and top 5 things more modern games could probably have taught them. So let's kick it off with point number 1, preemptive strategy. Content was so hard it just made sense for players to talk to each other and plan it out ahead of time. This also encouraged creative combinations to best utilize what was available, whether that be through equipment, spells, job combos, or support choices. Because not every combo could waltz in and just burn it down. Some abilities players had could only be used every 5, 10, or 60 minutes. I mean, with that kind of delay, that might mean that the fight was already over by the time it recasted and was ready for use again. Planning out ahead of time when to use those abilities to best leverage it with your party and make sure that the other members of your party are ready to take advantage of it as well was crucial. Not only did it enhance the social experience, but it gave a greater sense of reward knowing that your plan was successful. Now it's always just approach with your optimal rotation, finish it as fast as possible, and don't really worry too much at all about what anybody else is doing. Now, the bad side of this was that sometimes people, myself included, take that and say that MMOs these days are just too fast that action combat isn't the way to go, that those best of times are waiting 5 minutes in between using abilities and slowly watching auto attacks swing by. Let's face it, a lot of that was boring, and by level cap that wasn't even usually the case. Does anyone actually remember Monk at level 1, slowly waiting an eternity in between attacks, which you'll probably miss, building up TP for a weapon skill we didn't even get until level 3, then after that we had to, what, use boost? Like, which did nothing, until like level 40 when they got focus? I mean, my point is, there's something to be said for engaging, fun combat systems. It doesn't have to be tab targeting, and we certainly can have more to do with it than was often the case in classic MMOs. But as long as we still have a need for that strategy of timing in between players, of abilities that are used in conjunction with others instead of just my own little optimal rotation. Bringing us to point number two, travel. At some point in our busy lives, games started making it easier for players to get around, to spend more time, in theory, playing the game and less time walking across it. Unfortunately, it's hard to maintain a sense of scale and immersion when, in reality, you're teleporting between fights and cutscenes. Distances in Final Fantasy XI could be so great I'd be truly grateful and willing to pay for teleportation services, and I know it's the same with many others. Vehicles were physical things that could be ridden and moved around on. They were in an actual space of the game, moving about in zones. I was always jealous of World of Warcraft that had an airship that you could actually jump off of. It was in a physical space, you'd see it flying by. In MMOs of old, to get to new areas, old areas, player hubs, or to meet up with friends, you had to often walk, or maybe ride, through vast and often dangerous regions. And I do mean dangerous, not let me chase you for a few seconds and then kind of forget and lose interest kind of enemies, but this will take a full six people of my level to take down and I will chase you to the ends of the earth kind of enemies. Without that respect and fear for the world around you, you can't be immersed. It might as well be the, the hallway of many doors immediately leading you to the next interesting activity in pure safety. But that's not to say that was a perfect system. I mean, while I look back on my airship rides with nostalgic fondness, waiting 25 minutes to travel another 20 minutes to get to a party that's another 30 minutes away by foot, is a bit much on a regular basis. I mean, there's no other way to say it. I couldn't even play a game like that anymore. I barely have the amount of time I just described to play games on a daily basis, and I certainly don't have the time to spend it traveling. But there does need to be a balance, and the way games hand out teleports and fast travel these days is ridiculous. If there's no downside to warping everywhere and no benefit to experiencing the world, the choice is made for me. I don't think we should get rid of fast travel and warping by any means, but wouldn't it be more fun to tie it to a consumable or reagent of some kind that could be farmed or purchased? Put some thought behind whether or not that's really worth it if it's something you want to spend right then. No, we don't need to wait 25 minutes for an airship, but maybe 2 to 5 wouldn't be so bad. Give me just 2 seconds again where I don't have to be moving so that I can chat with other players. Put that vehicle in the real world again. Let me jump off of it if my destination is halfway in between the two you know, landing spots. Make the damn thing move faster than a snail's pace, sure, but don't let me just warp to the next boss without fear. So point three, and this one has come up a million times on my channel and will a million times again until we get something like this back, but gear that lasts. 
gear that matters, that isn't replaced in 5 seconds by something better. This could be a level 1, level 5, level 30, it doesn't have to just be level cap and shouldn't be. Remember getting that rare earring that lasted forever? You felt so good about it. I mean, those pieces of gear just improved the quality of the experience so much, players would seek them out, knowing their value would last forever. Players felt more accomplished having acquired it, legends and rumors would spread of the stories behind the acquisition, it was just such a thrill on all accounts. But for every one of those amazing memories, there's a story of 50 failed kills with no rewards. Hundreds of hours waiting and waiting with absolutely nothing to show for it. That's not fun. Yes, you'll feel accomplished if you finally get something from all that meaningless time, but was that game enjoyable for those 100 hours? Was it worth all those passed up opportunities and moments with friends that you instead spent in the middle of nowhere killing the same stupid lizard all over again and over again and over again? waiting for the rare notorious monster to appear, only to be let down kill after kill? No. And it's easy for communities to start to suggest that gear like that is a requirement, with players missing out on them, getting left out of events, or at least, you know, just generally put down emotionally. So no, I'm not saying I want to kill the same rabbit for four hours straight alone, ultimately hoping that some better rabbit will appear. Many new MMOs offer systems that if you continue to put in the time, there is a guaranteed chance of reward. You will be rewarded for your efforts eventually. You're building up points, you're building up credits to spend on something, and I think that there's some merit to that. Then I can know that my time investment is a real thing. Do I miss special gear like the Peacock Charm? Of course. Would I like for there to be a way to ensure that my efforts eventually would go rewarded? <laughs> yeah, kinda. I mean, maybe that's earning rabbit credits towards the next item I'm hoping will randomly drop. The problem is, when it's only a point system, I never get that thrill, that reward of like, oh my god, I got that rare drop that I didn't expect. You need that adrenaline rush, and when you always know that you're just like saving up money for the next purchase, whether that be in, in rabbit credits or actual money, it doesn't really feel as special. Now if you could combine those where you earn those rabbit credits towards the item I'm hoping will randomly drop, but it could randomly drop, or maybe each kill increases the chance that the next one will be more successful, I don't know, I mean there's a million ways we could do it, but we need to bring back those long term rewards, that adrenaline rush when you know you have a chance to get something that's truly going to be beneficial for a long period of time, not until 3 months from now when the update, you know, ruins it. Was the old system of terrible drop rates and everybody working against each other the best? Probably not but they've replaced it with something that lacks any kind of adrenaline at all, where everyone is rewarded equally, but at the same time and slowly, and there's no thrill of that moment of, oh my gosh, I can't believe that just dropped. Which brings us to point number four, which actually ties into the last one. There wasn't always a tangible benefit to helping friends with those activities, missions, or the occasional rare spawn hunt. Often there would be actually nothing. I mean, this kept the focus of the game away from that constant treadmill of progress, and more about enjoying others' company and the game itself. You were just happy to test your skills and character against whatever threats others were facing to prove that the effort had been worth it. It also allowed the game to revolve around that social need. No, there wasn't a reason that they should come help you, which is why you had to surround yourself with friends, with groups, join in on their activities, jump in on random stuff, just have a good time. And when the reverse is needed and you need someone's help for your own tasks, they'll be there. But this is also one of the hardest concepts for me to fully support from the old nostalgic point of view. Because on the bad side of this, I mean there were days, weeks, where you couldn't and didn't make any progress. Where you were only helping others for the sake of helping them. Let me put it this way, have you ever spent some time helping a new player, whether you know them or not, just getting familiar with the game, maybe trying to help them get caught up to where you are? By the time they've reached that point, you don't even feel like playing anymore because your character has just been stagnating that whole time, whether it be hours, days, weeks, you just lost all sense of progress and enjoyment personally. I'm not saying every little activity should reward all players involved, but the more systems there are that encourage players to replay something with others or benefit them even slightly for taking down that that notorious monster, those, those little feelings of progress and benefit help go a long way to make every player feel like it was time well spent. Do I miss the days when you had just had to shout for help and eventually after hours and hours you'd gather up 6 to 12 people and maybe you were the only one benefiting from that entire experience or maybe there were a couple others that joined in as well? Yeah, kinda, but I think modern games approach to adding benefit to all other players when they're doing those activities is, is good. Why shouldn't other players enjoy and get rewards from those kind of things?
So finally, point number five. I mean, it's been a part of every single point I've made thus far, but actual player interaction, community. Classic MMOs didn't have to worry about building a community because it was done so naturally. Seemingly, the entire game was against you, and banding together was the whole point. It was necessary. Whether this was through difficulty, time investment, or actual minimum player count requirements to fulfill objectives, there were countless reasons that it made sense for you to chat it up with others. On top of that, there was time while traveling, resting in between fights, sitting in town that you could just chat and wanted to, to fill in the dead time where your character had nothing to do. And considering all your activities would be locked to that single server and the players on it, there were consequences to consistently being an ass. Just like in real life, you could build up a reputation and it might stick with you preventing any from coming to your aid when you finally needed a bit of help yourself. However, those reputations weren't always deserved. I mean, maybe a player just learned the game did poorly in an early dungeon. A couple experiences like that in older games, and you might stop getting invited to content before you even really have a chance to learn how to play better or get better gear. Systems like the leveling roulette in Final Fantasy XIV exist to give experienced players a reason to play lower dungeons with the newer players, teaching them the ropes. On top of that, if I want to make progress in the 30 minutes I have alone, it's possible for me to do that, and there are other ways to level that don't involve a group or me being a beastmaster by myself, and that's great! The problem comes when the benefits to engage in a group don't outweigh doing everything alone. If the time it takes to get people together and risk being slowed down by negative personality or just generally bad player, and that doesn't outweigh the guaranteed solo experience and progress I know I can make, I mean, MMOs risk becoming what many already are, online solo games with other players just kind of around you. In an attempt for many MMOs to become approachable for absolutely anyone, many have devolved into a very solo experience. And while I think it's crucial for players to have options of how they play the game, there should still be reasons to play together and form lasting friendships. So look, I'm not saying I have all the answers and sometimes benefits from new games that I feel like I couldn't give up are actually core reasons some of my favorite aspects have gone missing. Am I willing to give up those conveniences for that classic experience? It's hard to say. Let me know your thoughts. I spend so much time hopping between my favorite classic Final Fantasy XI and the more modernized Final Fantasy XIV that I often blur the benefits of both in my mind. So what are you missing from games of old and what do you think new games do better? Hit me up in the comments and let me know. Otherwise, come join in on the chat on Tuesday nights at 8pm Eastern Standard Standard time on Twitch, and we can chat about it there. And as always, check back on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for more videos. Otherwise, have a good one, guys. Peace. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, you should totally think about subscribing. I've got videos coming out twice a week, and if you like this one, there's at least a chance you'll like some of the others that are very similar to this, so live dangerously. Let me know what you guys thought about the video in the comments and other videos you'd like to see. And finally, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Hunting for Games to keep up with all the latest stuff. See ya.